okay from the baby .com. so take seven on this video thanks to my little prince and my little princess so um, this is my second part in my feminism versus motherhood series if you want to see the first part about abortion the link is below so let's get straight into it this video is about returning to work too quickly I know quite a few mothers, particularly in the States, who have returned to work when their baby was three to four months old. When I tell people where I am living in Austria that this is the case, they are genuinely extremely shocked. Here the standard amount of time a woman takes for maternity leave is about two years. Um, the minimum generally one year. And that's pretty rare. Um, and when you talk about going back to work quickly I would say the priority is definitely placed upon your career or at the very least the bottom line which I understand of course you know everybody's got to eat and pay rent or mortgages but who is the priority the child or the career it's a difficult question so starting off with the obvious one of if you're going back to work really quickly the question of breastfeeding so assuming that you have managed to breastfeed up till this point, which hopefully you have, um, if your child is say four months old and you decide to return to work, you've either got the option of weaning and switching to formula, working part time and rushing home to um, nurse and probably still having to um, give someone some bottles to provide to your child or switching to pumping whether exclusively or partially coupled with normal nursing. Um, there's a lot of p potential problems associated with pumping. Uh, just to reel off a list, there is pumping, the process can be quite brutal on your breasts, so it could lead to pain, to injuries, to infections. It obviously, not being able to nurse all the time with your baby, can um, have an impact on the bonding process and not be so good for it. There is the possibility of your milk becoming contaminated in however you choose to store it. If you store it in the fridge or the freezer, this could um, lead to degradation of the quality of the milk. Um, when you feed a baby um, a bottle, the usual behavior of the person feeding the, ba um, the baby the bottle is to encourage them to empty the bottle and this is with both formula and uh, pumped milk breast milk this has been found to be the case and when you encourage them to finish the bottle you may there is a potential problem of either overfeeding or even underfeeding your child which has an impact on growth on bloating and general discomfort etc there's also issues with milk composition. Your baby's milk needs not only change with age, where in insofar as as they get older, the milk become um, con the fat content in the milk tends to increase. But in addition, um, during the day, the milk changes. So in the morning, it tends to be more watery as the baby needs a drink when they wake up. And during the actual feed itself, the milk composition changes as the feed progresses going from more watery to fattier at the end of the feed. And obviously a mixed bottle that you maybe pumped the, a cup, the day before or a few days before, assuming it hasn't even been in the fridge and frozen in the meantime, is not going to be able to tailor these to these needs of the baby at that time. Say if it's hot or it's cold outside and you need more water, say. Um, of course, it's not all doom and gloom. There are advantages to um, to pumping, say, you know, encouraging women to feed, breastfeed their babies for longer. Um, being a, um, any excess milk can be donated, or yeah, but generally there's not enough research. But either way, it's many women will explain that it's a pretty stressful process to make sure they have enough milk from day to day. That isn't the biggest concern that I hear with breastfeeding, that it's harder to get the same amount of milk out as women manage with straight breastfeeding. They feel like they have a supply issue. And this creates...
creates an incredibly stressful situation, which is a feedback loop that the more stressed you are, the more likely you are to have problems with your supply. So, but the thing is that, you know, a lot of women have to go back to work. Thank you, feminism. So, because of various reasons, including thanks to feminism, over the years, the over the last, say, 50 years, the labour force has massively expanded, which has, in part, been the cause of leading to wage depression. Back in the 50s, say, it was quite feasible and quite common to sustain a family on one income. Nowadays, you need a pretty well-paying job in order to be able to do this, otherwise it is expected that you need two incomes, or one income plus subsidies from and um, welfare from the government in order to sustain that. Obviously there are other reasons for the increase, uh, for the wage depression, but you know. But my main reason for making this video is um, the bonding or attachment detachment issue of having your children in daycare really soon on, um, which has really struck me recently. My first son went into daycare when he was one year old and he's been attending ever since. Now he is in kindergarten and he is four and a half years old. My second son attend, started attending when he was a year and a half old and honestly I was expecting him to have an easier time of it because he is quite robust in character. I recently took him out. Um, I was very happy with the daycare. That, um, the teachers there were fantastic. The facilities were top of the rain, uh, of the rain, you know, top lot. They were great. <laughs> and um, the teachers were very engaged and very warm and nurturing. And I was always very happy with what they brought to the table. But for other circumstances, basically, I sold my car to reduce our family's expenses, um, monthly expenses, and it was no longer feasible to drive him to daycare and back, because there is no bus going to his particular daycare, and also I felt like it might be good for him to be home with me after we had a holiday home um, time, up and he, him and his brother were home with me, and our relationship seemed to improve, whereas in previous holidays, having all the kids home with me had been extremely trying and I didn't feel like it helped our relationship at all but this time it got better so I took him out about two and a half weeks ago and he's been home with me and there has been a marked and noticeable change in his behavior firstly his behavior is just generally better he still gets into trouble he still breaks things that's who he is that's his hobby pretty much um but the screaming has reduced in in quant um, the amount he does it. He used to scream all the time when he didn't like something. He would also slide off his chair when he was ever whenever he felt irritated about something at meal times and lie on the floor and cry. And about a quarter of the time, he would bang his head on his way down, hurt himself, and then cry on the floor for ten minutes until I tried, managed to pick him up and put him back in his chair, which was no no mean feat given that he's incredibly heavy. And, you know, when children don't want to be picked up, they some they do something that makes them so much heavier than they were before. It makes it very, very difficult to lift them. And so that has reduced a lot. Um, but what is more noticeable, and my husband has agreed with me, is that he is so much more connected to us emotionally than he was before. Whenever he used to be upset, he he's a blanky kid. He loves his comforter. And he would, whenever he was upset, he wouldn't really be that bothered about having a cuddle with us if he was annoyed or hurt. But he would need his blankie. And after I weaned him when he was about 14 months old, it was a bit sad. He didn't seem very connected. I always assumed he was going to be a mama's boy, just like his dad was a major daddy's boy. His brother was a daddy's, major daddy's boy. And it didn't really work out that way after a while. He just slowly disconnected from me and didn't seem very interested in wh what I was doing or where I was. There was some, but it was not, it was not to a normal level. And I tried to tell myself that he's just a very independent child, but something deep down told me that this is, this is not right. He needs me. Now bear in mind that he was not in all day daycare. None of my children ever have been. 
He was in daycare from, well, his daycare um, operated from 7 a.m. till 1 p.m. And in reality, I managed to get him in usually by 8.30 and pick him up by about 12.30. So he was there for about four hours a day, five days a week, which is not a lot. 25 hours a week is not a lot. And they're with me the whole t the whole weekend. We do not have extended family living near us at all or babysitting options. So we are it when he's not in daycare. But despite this being a fairly modest amount of daycare, he is seems much happier, much more peaceful and much more loving to both me, my husband, and actually to his baby sister and his brother ever since we took him out. And... It, for me, it's actually a very calming thing because I feel the connection that I knew I was supposed to have. So there is a question that came up in my mind. Is it harmful to be in daycare uh, from a young age? He was a year and a half, not four months. So I looked into it a bit and here is what I came up with. Um, so, okay. Thanks to feminism, the question of uh, childcare for children under two is extremely politicised. Um, in 1986, Jay Belsky um, uh, released the paper Infant Daycare, A Cause for Concern, in which he noticed that children who from a very young age were put in, placed in daycare for a certain amount of time, not even a massive amount of time, but moderate, they displayed uh, symptoms of aggression and disobedience later in life. This had a massive impact on his career. In, you know, the, the feminists pounced and he became a pariah for a good period of time in his, in his field, apparently. Then this, these findings were backed up um, ten years later by Kathy Silver. She found, that these, um, found these effects herself and she noticed them when she tested the children at age five, age seven, but she found it had worn off by age 11. So there's a question of whether it's the you know the longevity of the problem of the effects but both of them said more research is needed it's too early to tell what the impact is but despite this there is some indication and i think a lot of us feel in our bones that when we feel that guilt when we drop our young children off at daycare and they cry that this is not something that is beneficial to our children and despite this no one really pays attention to it when it comes to policy and they push forward for more daycare and longer daycare and cheaper daycare. Cheaper, I'm not going to argue with, but in looking out, um, out for this, I discovered an article about 24-hour daycare that is available in Canada now. There is a place that offers, several places that offer 24-hour daycare. It's fairly rare, but it's aimed at families who work, do shift work um say nurses fire um, fire departments etc and they had one particular daycare that was um, interviewed for the article said they had a wait list of over 800 families a wait list in addition so they're pushing forward with this getting children out of the home and they're pushing forward with a particular type of daycare where it's a group of children but the findings are suggesting that the that the only way to really make it work and reduce the harmful effects of having your children in daycare on their emotional development is to have more or less a one-to-one -one relationship where one adult to one child but most even at the best of times with really young children most daycares offer one adult to three children and when they're two years older or um, two years to four years old then it's one adult to five children i believe and unfortunately this does not seem to be enough children need to know that there is a child and an adult there for them when they need them and when they're very young they don't understand about emo you know what mommy and mommy has to do with her day but they just understand it through physical proximity um and I think we all deep down understand when you don't really, un I definitely didn't understand it before I had children. I absolutely assumed that I would have children and then six, like a year later, I would go back to work. I would do a year at work, then I would have a child, 
be home for a year, back at work for a year, but home, back, forward, back, forward, until I was done. And clearly it didn't work out that way. The first time when I was in work with my first son and I was pregnant was extremely stressful in terms of logistics because the infrastructure is less developed for childcare where I live. A lot of families around here opt for having a childminder or a nanny, which the findings do seem to suggest that that is actually more beneficial to children because the groups do tend to be smaller and therefore they're more emotionally available to the children, which is just out of necessity. You can't be emotionally 100% available to 10 children. It's just too much all at the same time, all the same age. Hiya, hiya, hiya. But the problem is, well, why don't we just wait for two years to go back to work? Well, obviously there is the issue of what's, is my job still going to be waiting for me? But you would say, well, if your children are your priority, then maybe you just need to live with that reality. But I feel, my, I'm sorry. Oh, she's climbing all over me. But my opinion is that feminism has put us in a situation where we are expected to make our careers the priority. Sure, the reality of our species is that we have to breed, but get it done quickly and get back to work. And this puts the priorities of, or the needs of wo um, women above the needs of children, which I believe in my opinion, goes against the natural order of society, the way things should be. It it fails to respect the role that we play in our homes as mothers and wives. <laughs> I personally was not happy about the recent day without women in work that went on, because obviously there was no expectation that mothers were going to say, I'm not going to breastfeed my child or change any diapers or pick my kids up from daycare today. No, because we don't really work. We're not really <laughs> in the labor force so, or we don't really matter. That's, that's the, what I got from that. I was pretty insulted by it, actually and I don't tend to get insulted very easily. Either way, I think rather than pushing forward with this policy of daycare, we should be looking into the effects of group daycare, whether other kinds of care are better for children and um, whether there are harmful, harmful effects and from what point to when should we be still staying home with our children for their emotional development rather than pushing women into a situation where they are forced to return to work either at four months, um, that when the children are four months old partially through financial necessity and partially because they've been taught all their lives that they are a lesser person if they decide to stay home with their children. So that's my spiel. Uh, let me know what you think. Like the video, subscribe. See you next time. Bye.